Hi, everybody. This is Crypto Rich working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. Now, if you are a regular subscriber to this channel, thank you so much. If you are not yet a regular subscriber, please do subscribe. But you will know that I cover privacy projects. I have a particular interest in privacy projects and censorship resistant projects because I think without privacy, there is no freedom. And in this video, I'm going to be interviewing the CEO of a censorship resistant platform that uses the blockchain in all sorts of ways that I don't as yet know. We're going to discover and it's consistent with my commitment and interest in privacy and censorship resistance. To find the best cryptocurrency investments, check out Token Metrics. Use my affiliate link for a discount. Safety and security notice. Please watch out for comments like this by scammers pretending to be me or other huge crypto YouTubers. Also, please follow me on BitTube.video. You can also follow me on Odyssey. These are both censorship resistant platforms. And every now and then I am going to post a video which isn't going to be on YouTube. Find me on these platforms. Hey, Tishan, thank you so much for making yourself available. You are the founder or the CEO of Handshake and they have a coin called HNS. Is that right? Uh, it's actually a uh, name base, which makes Handshake easier to use. Uh, and we built on top of Handshake. Uh, there's actually no core, you know, quote unquote, Handshake team. Uh, it's actually a very decentralized protocol. So as soon as it was launched, um, there are, you know, course contributors and core contributors, you could say, or people who contributed a lot to the protocol. But I uh, run Namebase and the CEO co-founder, uh, and then there's with the, for the protocol, just just the background. There's no central foundation uh, backing it. It's really all community driven. It's you know honestly the most community driven project uh, in crypto. There's no you know no like founder, uh, official founder of any form. So uh, you know it's very very decentralized. That's why Mike Michelini. He's also someone who's very active in the community and contributes a lot. You know he's like a very um, active director, and he just stepped up after finding Handshake on his own. Uh, similar to you, you know, you just discovered Handshake and then now you're, you're doing this. So it's like everyone kind of contributes on their own, uh, working together. Okay. So Handshake is fully decentralized. It's just a protocol that's out there. And then Namebase is building applications on top of Handshake. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We basically, in order to use a protocol, you need to get Handshake coins and submit a bunch of different transactions uh, in order to interact with it. And so we abstract all that away and basically provide a simple web interface in order to get Handshake coins and by handshake names and we have a, a marketplace as well for people to trade their names um, and that's actually uh, pretty very very active actually so so when the was the handshake protocol launched uh, it was launched february of 2020 so it's been live for about uh you know a year year and five months now right and fully decentralized community-based project no ico no pre-mine somebody just released it and it's its own algorithm right or is it a fork of something yeah, so uh, the uh, initial creation of Handshake was very interesting. Um, the initial developers, which included Joseph Poon, who made the Lightning Network, uh, and also the team behind Bcoin, which is a JavaScript full node for Bitcoin. Uh, basically, what they did is they raised $10 million uh, from a bunch of the largest VCs in the world, like A16Z and Sequoia, uh, Greylock Founders Fund. Um, and they actually donated the entire capital raise uh, to uh, nonprofit internet organizations. So, you know, GNU, Firefox, the Free Software Foundation, uh, EFF. Uh, so basically there was a, uh, a you know, pre minus source like this, like investor, uh, like I, ICO, um, but it was only used to set an initial valuation for the coins. And then all of the funding raised was given away, like every, every single penny was actually given away to, uh, you know, free internet uh, foundations. Um, and then once the protocol launched, the, there was no more official foundation after that. And the protocol works in a similar way to Bitcoin. It's a proof of work based coin. Um, it actually uh, similarly, you know, basically has the same code, except there's a covenant system that was implemented in order to allow for uh, name auctions on chain. Uh, so it's actually very similar to if you uh, read some of the Bitcoin talk. Uh, forum posts from Satoshi Nakamoto. He describes this like bit DNS kind of architecture, um, and it's almost uh, you know very very much in line with that. It's basically using Bitcoin in order to implement uh, decentralized a decentralized naming system. 
Okay, and what is the point of a decentralized naming system? Why do that? Yeah, great question. So the primary use case of Handshake is for decentralized DNS. Uh, DNS stands for domain name system. And you use DNS every day, every time you use a web browser. So when you type in google.com or youtube.com, you're using the domain name system. YouTube.com and Google.com are domain names. And the way it works, it's, it's a hierarchical structure. So you know, .com is a top level domain name and then YouTube.com is a second level domain name of .com, right? And then you have .io, namebase.io. So namebase is a second level domain of .io. So at the top of this architecture, you have the TLDs, which are you know, .com, .io, .org, .net, and actually, there's an organization that behind the scenes that governs this entire system called ICANN. Um, and they're a centralized organization. And that uh, you know, comes with all of the issues that can plague normal centralized organizations, which are um, you, know, you have rent seeking, you have regulatory capture. And there is even this uh, huge controversy um, uh, very recently where .org was about to be sold to a private equity firm that was run by a former ICANN uh, CEO. So it's a very much like a you know insiders club. You know, there's a lot of money in the DNS. It's uh, it's about a hundred billion dollar industry that most people just aren't aware of. Uh, it generates eight billion dollars annually, um, and so you have this entire system. And even outside of the corruption issues, uh, in terms of just the fundamental architecture, at a you know, if you look at it from the technology perspective, um, you can't actually have you know, truly censorship resistant or truly secure DNS just based on the way that it's implemented. Um, however, with a blockchain now, it's possible to create a domain name system that doesn't have an ICANN, right? So there's no governing authority besides the rules encoded in the blockchain. And you can actually have this naming system that is uh, fully accessible to anyone around the world that, you know, can't be censored or controlled and is uh, and enables a greater level of security than the DNS that is, uh, you know, exists today. Um, so that's that's what Handshake is used, primarily used for in a nutshell. And the adoption has been quite phenomenal. Namecheap recently, um, you know, they're a very big domain registrar. They've been getting into Handshake. They uh, bought .p, which is a TLD on Handshake. They bought it for $250,000 um, uh, in order to actually go and launch their own uh, registrar, you know, for .p domains on Handshake. So it's getting adoption, but I'm, you know, I've been speaking for uh, uh, quite a bit of time. So I'll just like leave it at that. And, and in case you have any questions. <laughs> no, that's great. You should carry on because this is your, uh, your, your passion. This is what I find interviewing uh, people who are in these sorts of projects, especially if it's like privacy focused, they're all passionate about the work that they do. So, so you knock yourself out, not a problem at all, Tishan. So the, if I, I'm just, so, if I, so this is kind of new to me because all this stuff goes on in the background. You know, I know there's a google.com and a do, do google.co.uk, but I don't really, really care about what goes on in the background. Why should I care about the difference, say, between a handshake domain name DNS or a centralized one? Yeah, that's you a great know. question. Um, and, you know, actually, the for most people, you know, DNS is really an application that has billions of users, right? Like everyone with a web browser is using DNS, but it's something that's very invisible to people, right? Because you don't care about the name per se, you just want to access the application behind that name. And you just want the application that you're accessing to be, you know, accessible to you. The issue is, is that uh, increasingly the applications are getting censored uh, in a big way, right? So if you're in China, you know, if you try, try to type in like google.com, you're not going to be able to access that, right? Or if you're in the Middle East and you're trying to type wikipedia.org, uh, in a lot of countries, you're not going to be able to access that. Or, um, you know, try to type in the sites of different uh, news publications, you won't be able to access that. And so the problem is that, you know, people don't care about the names themselves, they care about the applications, but you need to use the names in order to access the applications. And what's happening is that the names, by censoring the names, people are being prevented from using the applications. So that's one is as an end user, why you would care. But then also as a developer, there's increasingly a trend towards, uh, you know, this like Web3 decentralized web stack, right? So you have um, tools like Filecoin and Sciacoin and ARWeave, which are doing decentralized storage. You have protocols like Akash, which is, you know, decentralized compute. You have, you know, decentralized VPN uh, applications. And what you're seeing is this trend towards decentralizing every layer of the stack. The critical frontmost 
uh, part of that layer is naming. Because in, in order to access any application, you need to go through the domain name. right? That's why you see even for the most popular dApps on Ethereum or on any other chain, they all have you know, traditional domain names. Right? You have uniswap.org, you have compound.finance, curve.fi. And the irony is that even though the applications are decentralized, the way that people access, are accessing these applications is still through the centralized domain name system. And then you'll have issues where you know, the registrar ha has an issue and you know, hackers are able to get access to the domain name. Um, I forget which protocol it happened with, but recently there was a dApp that um, you know, lost access to a domain name and the hackers were able to serve up a different web page that was able to go and you know, steal funds. And so if you're a dApp developer, you want your domain name to be secure because otherwise someone could be, it's the same, it's as bad as having a smart contract vulnerability, right? Because if someone's accessing the website, they can just point you to a completely other uh, dApp and have you know, customers deposit funds into a completely different smart contract, right? Or to just a wallet address that you're gonna use to steal customer funds from. So if you wanna actually have a fully secure dApp, you need to have a decentralized domain name. So for the end consumer, again, it's really just all, all about accessing the application that you want, when you want, and being able to see it. But for a developer, you want to have uh, you know, confidence that your dApp will be used and not uh, be compromised and be accessible. And you want to make sure that this entire system is secure. And so the decentralized naming is just the frontmost layer of that. OK, so then what sort of domain names are available? Yeah, so the interesting thing on Handshake is that it's decentralizing the very top of the domain name hierarchy. So it's decentralizing the top level domains. So what you can register on Handshake is different TLDs, right? So you can have dot whatever, right? You can have dot your name, uh, dot hello, right? And anything really. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, Namecheap, re Namecheap registered dot P. Uh, and these names can be used in a number of ways. I can actually just demo real quick. Sure. Um, how some of them can be used. Okay, so what's this we've got here? Welcome neighbors. Now, is this something that's publicly available if somebody wanted to try this out? It is, it is publicly available. Cool, so I'm, I'll show you how the names can be used in a number of different ways. One is just as a normal TLD. So for example, we have uh, NB as a TLD, and then we set up a website at welcome.nb, and I'm able to access this website directly on my computer because I'm connected to Handshake DNS. And I'll show you in a second how to do that. It's very easy. It just takes uh, 10 seconds to change a setting on your computer and you can access it. If you don't have access to Handshake DNS or you haven't configured it already on your computer, there's a gateway, hns.to. So you can just go to welcome.nb.hns.to and you'll be able to access this you know, from the traditional web uh, if you're not already plugged in to Handshake DNS. Okay. So this is just an example of using the name as a normal TLD. The interesting thing is you can also use it uh, directly for a website. So let me just show you uh, Nick Carter. Um, you know, you're probably familiar with him. He's a very well-known crypto Twitter uh, personality. He has his own website set up at Nick Carter slash. And this is actually a decentralized website. So the web page itself is hosted on SIA, which is a de decentralized storage network. And then the name resolution is the uh, is going through Handshake, right? So I'm able to go to Nick Carter slash. And then again, if I don't have Handshake DNS set up on my computer, I can go to nickcarter.hns.to. Okay. okay. And finally, um, the super interesting thing is that, you know, in addition to just using your names as a TLD, you can even use it as a uh, basically like a decentralized username. So what I mean by that is there's this website, Name and News, that we created. It's a normal forum. And we set it up so that anyone can actually use their handshake name to log into this website. And it's completely uh, in a decentralized way. So for example, you know, everyone posting here, you know, Charizard slash IDS slash uh, HNS on slash, they all own their own handshake names outside of Namer News, but they're able to use their handshake names to log in and make posts. So I'm going to do that real quick right now with my name, Teshan.namebase. So we actually also have the .namebase TLD, and I'm just using it to log in to Namer News. And now I'm logged in. And the cool thing is that any website can actually go and use handshake login and let people log in with their username. So it's a very different paradigm from the existing paradigm because normally you go in and you register a username on a website and the website owns your username. But in this case, I own my username. I own tshon.namebase and I am authenticating as tshon.namebase to the website. And what that means is that I can now have a single 
identity that I truly own and use it across the decentralized web. And no single website can take down my username. Name or news could ban me, for example, from posting, but I, I'll always be able to use tiashan.namebase to log into other websites. And I'll always have a website at tiashan.namebase, which I think currently uh, they should just redirect to another site. Or maybe I do not set it up because I also have the name uh, tiashan slash, which I use as my primary uh, name to log in with. Um, so these, this is just another name. That's amazing. Uh, could, could, could I, what's to stop me logging in with your name? Right, so that's just the way that it's implemented is it's actually impossible for you to log in with my name. The way it works is that when I'm on tishan.namebase, and I'll just go through the login process again, just so you can see. So, you know, let's pretend, let's pretend I'm you right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like the screen, I'm like looking from your perspective and, and you're trying to log in with my name and you want to, um, you know, log in at tishan.namebase. Mm -hmm. What's happening when I click continue right here is that Namer News is issuing me a challenge request. It gave me a message to sign and I need to sign that message and send a response back to Namer News uh, that they can then validate. And the way that Namer News will validate the response is it'll check to see that I signed with a key that is already published on the Handshake blockchain. Right. So unless you have ownership of the tiashan.name name on Handshake, and unless you've you know, published a key on the Handshake blockchain that is associated with tiashan.name base, you won't be able to fulfill the challenge signature because you'll, you'll sign with your own key and that key won't be associated with tiashan.name base. And Namer News will be able to confirm that because Namer News is just checking the records on the Handshake blockchain behind the scenes. So there's no way for you to actually pretend to be me unless you have ownership of the name. Okay, which would mean that I, I'm able to post the key or the hash that you originally posted when you set it up. Right, right, exactly. Okay, and then and that would also prevent me, say for example, registering google.com. I wouldn't be able to do that because that's already been allocated. Exactly, exactly. All of the existing TLDs, you know, .com, .net, .org, those have already been allocated. So all you can register on Namebase are new TLDs. So I'll just show how, you. How would I find out what those, what those are, which ones are available? Yeah, so you can actually register any uh, TLD that's not already registered. So I'll just show, um, you know, as I mentioned before, we have a marketplace where people sell their names. And so you can see there are all these different names, um, any name you can think of, right? So I can type in whatever I want. Oh, actually, this is already registered. <laughs> <laughs> but you could buy it for 50 HNS. So I could buy it for 50 HNS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, random name, blah, blah. That's probably not registered. Okay, there we go. So. This name, as you can see, there's no marketplace listing and it has, you know, it says unreleased. Um, I'm sorry, it's released, but it's not, uh, the auction isn't over. So what that means is it's a random name that I type in. No one's registered yet. So I can be the first to register it. And yeah. the way that you register it is through an on-chain decentralized auction system. Okay. Um, and so on Namebase, we abstract this all away, uh, right? So there are all these different steps involved. And what we do is we just let people submit any bid and we'll handle all of the other transactions that you need in order to complete the auction. And you can basically go through and uh, complete the auction and then you can win the name and use it. Uh, and so just as an example, let's, let's just show token. Um, Ooh, this token has already- 88 million HNS this is gonna cost. Yeah, that's a, higher, uh, that's a higher price name. Although you can also submit an offer. So usually I think the highest name sold so far was dot p for 375,000 hns uh, and so usually the sellers might put a, a higher amount just because they don't want someone buying it for too cheap but if you look at the auctions here so this auction was released um you know uh, about a year ago mm -hmm. right june 12th and then it ended june 27th and you can see all the different bids so these bids are all on chain right so these are all different bids placed by different people and it looks like the top bid was for 33,000 HNS and the second highest bid was for 12,000 HNS. So then the owner of this name won the auction and ended up paying 12,000 HNS because right. the way the auction system works is that you pay the second highest bid price. Why the second highest? Uh, it's basically done through a Bikri auction. 
So the idea of a Vickery auction is that, uh, and this is kind of going into the game theory, which, you know, depending on how interesting it is, we can go more or less into it. But basically, the uh, optimal state for a Vickery auction is that you want to place your highest bid, you know, whatever you're, high, you're, you're most willing to pay. And everyone in a Vickery auction is incentivized to do that. And you're okay with doing that. You're not trying to game it because you'll only end up paying whatever the second highest bid price is. So as long as you know you're only going to pay, pay the second highest bid price, you should bid whatever your maximum bid price is because you can only pay up to that. And mm -hmm. if if it's possible to, uh, you know, if it's possible that maybe you care a lot about this name, but most people don't actually care, right? So you know, if your bid is ten thousand HNS more than anyone else, it's still okay because you're only going to pay the second highest bid price. I, right. So that's why it's the uh, you pay the second highest bid price. Okay, so then, so at the auction when this name was created, uh, this guy, the second highest, twelve thousand, has won the name and is now putting out for sale for that price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. exactly. So yeah, million. and actually, this uh, this marketplace is very active. Um, we recently wrote a post about this. Uh, uh, many names on Namebase will actually sell for a hundred x or greater gains. And it's almost like a proof of work because initially registering a name through the auction process is um, kind of involved, right? It takes two weeks to do, and you need to compete against other people to do it. But then once you have registered the name, someone can buy it from you instantly. And so it's way more convenient to be able to buy a name on the marketplace from someone instantly than to have to go through the auction process. Right. Um, and so oftentimes names will sell uh, for much higher than they were you know, initially purchased for. Um, so for example, this name just sold for... 777 HNS, mm -hmm. and it was originally purchased. There's actually only one bid. So when there's only one bid, the buyer uh, pays nothing because the second highest bid is zero. Right. So the owner of this actually was able to win this name for free and sold the name for 777 HNS just a few months later. Um, that's a gain of you know basically they made a hundred dollars, you know, hundred fifty dollars for free. Right. Well, let's have a look at some of the names that have recently been won or about to be bid. Yeah, let me take a look at that and just show it off. And just an example, here's another name. This sold for 2340 HNS, uh, you know, about $400. Uh, dollars. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, about, yeah, $400, $500. And it was originally purchased for 400 HNS. Um, so, you, you know, it's a 6x gain uh, in just a few months. So many of these names will sell for uh, you know a much higher price than they originally registered for. And if you look some at them, sorry, some of them seem really obscure. Like I can get there was cannabis therapy I can get Indonesia I can get, but what's mm -hmm. this XN dash dash O C I Z? Ah yes, so these XN dash dash O C I Z, this is um, an emoji name, <clears throat> and the way that emojis work in your browser is the domain name system doesn't support emojis natively um, and that uh, emojis are, are Unicode characters and then the browsers don't really support that. DNS doesn't support that natively because you can only use you know, normal alphabet characters in a domain name. And so there's a special encoding format called Punicode that basically lets you map a string of letters like this to a emoji. Right. And this is what you're seeing here. So this is why we show the emoji representation next to every Punico name that we detect. And that's what you're seeing here. And that's a pretty common uh, set of names that people will go for. So if you filter by Punicode, you can see these are all the different emoji names. Um, and they're, they're quite popular as well. They are, um, you know, I think with the naming trends, this, the name marketplace is kind of its own beast. It's, it's very easy to get started, actually. One of our community members was saying that they got their um, high school son into it and just gave them like a few hundred dollars of HNS. And then now they're making a few hundred dollars a month just buying and selling names um, just in their spare time. So it's a really nice way to actually teach someone uh, <laughs> economics because it's a, it's a really you know vibrant marketplace. Uh, but these are all the different emoji names that are for sale. Okay, so let's say, so I choose a name, I buy one or I create one in an auction and I get to own it. And then I can then, then it's registered and then I can create a website against it or a word, you know, WordPress or whatever it is, whatever people use to go daddy or something to create right. sites. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and I can't, for example, create Google by google.com or anything or bbc.co.uk because they're already allocated. 
Exactly. Yeah. And even if you try to register .google, um, a lot of the top brand names have been pre-reserved. It was done by looking at the top 100,000 Alexa names, just so that the chain can make sure that only google.com can own .google. So there's a special verification method uh, that's and done in a completely decentralized manner that basically allows google.com to claim .google. And so that way, you can ensure, uh, you know, this like brand protection, right? This like brand um, identity is still secure because normally, you know, if someone's going to a .google name, they, they're not trying to go to some random person's .google name. They're expecting to go to google.com's Google name. Right, because somebody set up something, they could register Google and then they could set up a website which says fascism.google, for example, right, right. which wouldn't be good for their website. And then I suppose it would be the same, for example, BBC. I wouldn't be able to register that or CNN. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, just kind of show you how some of these names are used in the wild. It's really, you know, for a developer, you're really using it for your decentralized website, right? And I kind of showed off some of those. Um, but also even as a, you know, crypto enthusiast or prosumer, um, it's really nice because these names are basically your decentralized identity. Like I mentioned, you can use them for a website, you can use it to log in to a website. Um, and then you'll see on Twitter, a lot of people who are in the handshake community will have their name slash as their uh, profile. So we have you know, name based slash, for example, as our uh, Twitter name. And you'll see that, um, let me just scroll down and so you see Michael Michelini, who yeah. connected, right? he has michael.michelini. So if I go to um, michael.michelini, this should go to his website. Oh, okay, his website is actually down, but it is actually his website. No, is it, you put in dot slash, does it have a dot before the slash? Uh, I think um, so that that's actually kind of treated the same by browsers. It's kind of like a, uh, although it might actually affect the website. Oh, there we go. Yeah. See, so right now I just typed in michael.michelini slash, and then his his website must look at the, um, it's probably looking at the host name and just making sure that it's actually michael.michelini slash and not michael.michelini dot slash. The browser will still work with you do the dot slash, but the website's definitely filtering based on that. But you can see here, right? So Michael Michelini is using his handshake name as his uh, online identity now. And so I saw Michael.Michelini and I can go to Michael.Michelini um, you know, on handshake. And the nice thing about that is also if anything ever happens to Michael Michelini's uh, profile on Twitter, if he gets taken down or censored in any way, I'll still be able to access Michael.Michelini because he owns that username himself, not Twitter. Um, so, you know, Twitter can take down his account, but he still has his handshake name and I'll always be able to access it. Right. And that's because that's decentralized, registered on the handshake blockchain. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay. And then Namebase builds applications or uses the handshake blockchain. Yep, exactly. So on Namebase, you know, if you want to get a name like Dot Michelini, you need to go and register that on handshake. And the easiest way to get that is to buy it from the marketplace, or if the name hasn't been registered yet, you have to go through the auction system, which we uh, enable. And in order to get these names, you need to use HNS, which is what you know the uh, token of the protocol. And so we also provide a way to buy HNS um, with Bitcoin if you're outside the US and with USD if you're in the US. Uh, but we provide an on-ramp so that people can really easily buy the name so that they can then go directly to uh, sorry, buy the coins so they can go directly to buying the name. Right. Okay. Now, given that it's its own blockchain, um, what kind of wallet can I keep HNS in? Is there a wallet? Yeah. So one is one is Namebase is a, a custodial cloud wallet, so you can keep your HNS in Namebase. There's also a uh, GUI wallet, self-hosted, uh, called Bob Wallet. Um, I don't have the URL on top of my mind right now, but I think if we just search Bob Wallet, it should okay. show up. Yeah, so this is a desktop application that you can download as well, and that can store your HNS. Right. And somebody's somebody's bought that name BobWallet.io. Right. Right. Exactly. Possibly Bob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So then now you have multiple different ways of actually storing HNS, and then you, as an end user, of course, have the maximum optionality because it's a blockchain, right? And so you can choose your own adventure in that sense. Okay, and how does Handshake tie in with what Indigitus are doing and with other applications? Yeah, and so, you know, as I mentioned, Handshake is just the naming layer of the decentralized web stack. And if you look at um, some existing 
players like Fleek, for example, um, let me see if it's referenced on, yeah, you see here. So on Fleek, if it's a website that you can use to deploy decentralized websites, uh, mm -hmm. it's a tool that lets you deploy decentralized websites and it'll let you put it on, you know, IPFS or IC hosting. And once you've deployed the website, you can use Handshake to set up a decentralized name for it, right? So that people can still access your application uh, through a fully decentralized stack. And so this is just one of the examples where, you know, Handshake is being composed with other DWeb protocols. Another one is AR Weave, uh, Argo. It has integrated Handshake. And what that means is that you're going to be able to visit your AR Weave applications using Handshake names very soon. So these are the types of integrations and partnerships that you know we actively work on to make Handshake more interoperable with the rest of the DWeb stack. And the nice thing is that Handshake is completely agnostic to the rest of the stack, right? Because it's its own, its own blockchain. It's not on Ethereum or any other chain. So it can actually interoperate with any uh, you know DWeb protocol very easily because it's built to be agnostic. And uh, there's another. Uh, protocol Flare that's launching pretty soon that's also using Handshake. And so any protocol um, that wants to integrate a naming system can actually make use of Handshake fairly easily. Okay, that's amazing. And then you have active partnerships with some of these projects or are you just able to access the, their applications? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of these are active partnerships. So with Fleek, for example, something that we created as a tool was uh, it's called the Name Based Record Assistant. Basically, it just makes it easy for users, if they already have their name through Namebase, uh, with Fleek, they can very easily call in to the Namebase wallet and help the user set up the website at their handshake name. Uh, normally, you would have to copy and paste records and submit some blockchain transactions. And so we have a tool that makes it much easier to do that. And so that's what Fleek and Argo uh, use. Um, and so, but once, once the integration is live and running, you know, the active part is more so just in terms of the communities interacting with each other because it's, it's fairly lightweight infrastructure. So once it's, you know, once integration has been written, people can just go and use it without too much, you know, human intervention. Right. Okay. All right. And then what are you doing to get the word out so people know about Handshake and discover it? Yeah, a lot of it is through uh, these partnerships. So once the, I don't know, I don't think the Argo partnership is actually fully live yet, but like once that goes out, then we'll be sending out um, you know, a newsletter and sharing that that's live. And another thing is, again, as I mentioned, a lot of the existing DNS industry is really taking a serious look at Handshake. And so we have you know, Namecheap that has a Handshake name now. And soon you'll actually be able to get your own Handshake names on Namecheap.com. Uh, that's actually a huge, uh, huge event, huge partnership because Namecheap is the uh, number two domain registrar in the world. So they're huge. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to see Handshake directly on Namecheap's website. And so I think that integration will get the word out uh, in a very big way. And I think once that gets, you know, once once that integration goes live, there's going to be uh, goes live. There's going to be a lot more attention towards um, Handshake, uh, and that should be coming live uh, pretty soon this summer. Right, and that would benefit HNS coin holders, I assume, because there's limited supply, and people need the HNS coin in order to buy and sell the names. That's, that's what I would expect, but this is not financial advice. <laughs> sure. sure, no, I understand. I understand that, but the demand is likely to go up. Yeah, against, I would expect that. Against a fixed supply. Yes, this is not financial advice at all. <laughs> <laughs> People should do their own due diligence. Thank you for saying that. Okay, and then what have you got, apart from Namecheap coming up, what else have you got on the roadmap? What's, what can people look forward to? Yeah, definitely. So uh, another big one is Brave has agreed to integrate Handshake. Um, and you know the really great thing about that was their CEO said, that they're willing to integrate Handshake for free as long as the community submits a uh, PR since Brave is open source to do the integration. And so community members are currently working because as I mentioned, the entire project is very community driven. Uh, it's, it's entirely driven by the community. And so there's currently community, a community member working on integrating Handshake with Brave. Um, and so once that goes live, then you'll see you know, Brave's 30 million users, uh, 30 million plus users will have access to Handshake. And I think that'll be another big event um, that's being worked on currently you know, I think it could happen anytime, um, you know, in the next year. Uh, and so there's, there's that as well. And I would expect to see more domain registrars, um, you know, more partnerships with the DWeb stack. Akash is another uh, protocol for decentralized compute that's using Handshake uh, fairly often. And so, you know, more interoperability with that community. 
Um, it's really just playing into. I just, the sorry, so you, I just have to say I recorded an interview with um, Greg from Akash and posted it a few days ago. So oh. go and watch that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, great timing. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right. So you got that coming up. Anything else that you want to let people know? Yeah. So on the name base side, uh, you know, actually I should have mentioned this before, but we actually just launched a referral program that is uh, very generous. Uh, what, what it does is if you refer someone that signs up, they'll get an extra 10% bonus on all of their h and purchases. Um, you know, we're probably not going to keep this pro program live for too long, but we just want to get the word out initially. Uh, so what that means is let's say someone buys 100 h and they'll get an additional 10 h and bonus on top of their purchase. Um, so that is something that we're actively doing to promote Handshake. And we're also launching some you know, big improvements to the marketplace just to make it easier to get a Handshake name. Right now, it's still fairly involved. You need to sign up and you need to get h and and then get a name on the marketplace. Um, but the process can be fairly uh, confusing for new users. So, mm -hmm. so far, even though the marketplace has grown uh, very significantly the last few months, um, I'll just show you, we released you know, the stats publicly here. Um, you know, the marketplace has just been growing exponentially. Uh, and then you know, we're only halfway through July. So it looks like July will be another uh, big month. Um, but this has all come from you know, a very... Uh, committed early adopter community in order to reach you know more of the masses uh, it needs to be much easier to get a handshake name and use it and so that's why we've been also working on making it easier to get a handshake name in our marketplace uh you know making giving more tools to buyers and sellers so that you know the more more the more names that we get into people's hands the more you know you'll see handshake names on twitter the more you'll see handshake names being used and people using it as their decentralized web page um and then of course you know the more adoption happens so it's you know, reducing the friction to get a handshake name plus uh, partnerships with the web plus uh, increasing industry adoption from, you know, browsers and uh, domain registrars. Okay, very good. Now the bonus that you're going to pay out the 10%, where's the money from that coming from? Because this is a proof of work coin. Yeah, yeah. And so that that just comes from because we have a uh, on ramp. And so we're just going to pay that out of pocket as, you know, basically a marketing expense. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, for us, it's like we don't have an infinite marketing expense. So it'll be, you know, until we get, uh, reach out a certain point of bonuses paid out, then we'll stop the program because, um, you know, we, we don't have an infinite amount of money. Sure, sure. This is like Bitcoin or handshake grows on trees, right? Right, right. <laughs> protocol. Okay, now I'm gonna have the links to the website and also the Telegram group and people can get connected and stuff so they can find out, do their own due diligence. Is there anything else you wanna let people know about this before we finish up? Yeah, I would say the best way to get involved in the community is to join our Discord. Uh, we have a very active Discord community. Um, if you just go to community.namebase.io, we have all the links here. So yeah. I would highly recommend going there. Uh, it's very welcoming to newcomers, so feel free to ask your you know, questions there. Um, we also have a learning center as well at learn.namebase.io. And so you can go through here and learn you know, everything you need to know about Handshake. So, if you're trying to get involved and want to get started, you know, even if you're just trying to flip some of the names, just just, as to, just to find out, you know, just yeah. to find out and, and investigate and explore this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if you want to do that, check out learn.namebase.io, join the Discord community and um, just go from there. And that's, that's going to be the easiest way to get started. Great. Fabulous. Fabulous. Anything else, Tishan? Nope, that's it. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. This has been quite mind boggling. And I'm going to speak to you about something offline. And for anybody who's watching, um, let me know what you think. Is this something that you've already uh, invested in in some way, like you're involved in this project in some way? And between now and what, when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with Crypto Profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Tishan signing out. All the best. Bye-bye.